There is something which I said on this platform on Friday. That the contest for 2022 general election is going to be won and lost in Western Kenya. That the contest is actually going to be fought in Western province. And I went further and advised you guys to forget about Nyanza. Because Nyanza is already decided. I also went further and advised you guys to forget about Rift Valley. Rift Valley is also decided. I went further and advised you guys to forget about Central Kenya. Central Kenya is going to be taken care of. So the 2022 general election is going to be fought, won, and lost in Western Kenya. And that's why you are seeing a lot of activities happening in Western Kenya. This week, there was a huge meeting at Ndugu Francis Atoli's home just to consolidate Western Kenya. Musalia Mudavadi has been holding series and series of meetings geared towards consolidating his support in Western Kenya. And today there was drama in Fort Kenya. The member, the Secretary General, Eseli Simeu, the Kandui Member of Parliament, Wafula Wamunyinyi, and the Bungoma Governor, Wycliffe Wangamati, staged a coup against the chairman or the party leader, Moses Wasika Wetangula. And after some time, Moses Wetangula also addressed the media from the party's headquarters, dismissing that coup. But we're not going to go into the details about that particular coup. We are going to concentrate on the politics behind that coup. But before we do that, if you are bumping on this video for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and hit the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, you get notified. Now back to business. And for us to understand all these things which are happening in, in Fort Kenya, let us go back. I want you to take you guys to 2014. During that time, I was actively involved in ODM activities. In 2014, the ODM party announced a national election and several candidates offered their, themselves for various seats. Then emerged two camps. Team Fresh, headed by Joho, Ababu, and Nanok. And then there was also the other team, headed by Agnes Zani, Utino Kajong, and Polotuwa. So that election was going to go smoothly. And Team Fresh was actually going to carry the day. But if they had carried the day, something was going to happen. Ababu Namwamba, who was actually loved in Odium Party, had actually sneaked his way and was recruited by Jubilee Party because they had just won an election through William Ruto. And his mission was to help them take over the Odium Party. This was not known to many. The outgoing Secretary General, Professor Anyang Yongo, really wanted Ababu Namwamba to be the Secretary General. But there were those who were opposed to him. So on that election day, it took the intervention of men in black to save the party. Because look at it. Margaret Langat helped Railo Dinga and lost his seat as a result of that. So after that election, Raila Odinga appointed Margaret Langat as the executive director of Odium Party. And Margaret Langat worked very closely with Honorable Ababu Namwamba. So after that board election in Kasarani, then a strategy was developed. Because at the end of the day, Ababu Namwamba was made the Secretary General of the Party. So now we had Ababu Namwamba here and we had uh, Margaret Langat. And they plotted on how they were going to take this party from Raila Odinga. So the men in black again had to come and rescue the party from Margaret Langat 
under Babu Namwamba. That was now later, 2014. So the point I'm telling you here is that each of these political parties, there's certain positions you don't just give out to anybody. ODM gave the position of executive director to Margaret Langat. Then they gave secretary general to Babu Namwamba. Those two posts are the ones which are the custodian of party documents. So when Ababu was removed, Magrere was removed, Raila Odinga made sure that the people who served in those positions are actually people who could not betray him. Now let's go to Ford Kenya. Ford Kenya has the party leader. Who is the party leader? Moses Wetangula. And then Ford Kenya has the Secretary General. Dr. Simiu Eseli. So Eseli in his capacity as the Secretary General is the custodian of party documents. So Moses Wetangula, I don't know whether he was absent-minded, announced that he was going to kick out Dr. Eseli on Tuesday next week. So Eseli didn't wait for Tuesday to arrive. Of course, we know Moses Wetangula have been, has been having issues with the governor for, Kakam, for Bungoma and with the governor for Transonia. I don't know why he has issues with those people. Ford Kenya has two governors and he has problems with those two governors. So it was easier for Eseli to reach out to Wangamati and to Wamunyinyi to stage a coup. So these guys calculated that if they waited, you know Eseli is a former military guy, so they figured out if they waited up to Tuesday, then they were going to be kicked out. Let me just read for you an interesting Facebook post by Norman Magaya on this. He made a post. In the land of Mulembe, it is ab ab abomination to show a cow a knife before you slaughter it. Senator Weta sent messages that he was to eject a celly as the SG on Tuesday next week. On a fine Sunday morning, Honorable Eseli deployed his military experience and sent Weta packing. Game on. So basically it was the mistake, it was a big mistake for Weta to announce that he was going to send this guy home. Then he went further. The appointments by Weta are in vain. They can't execute any official document or perform official functions on behalf of the party. Above all, they will certainly not be accepted by the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties. The SLE group know him too well and plotted against him with a razor sharp precision. The son of, Kuba, of Kabuchai won't recover from his killer punch. Before I pen off on this matter, all legal party, party instruments, all party legal instruments are in the custody of Eseli Simiu. So Weta didn't realize that Simiu Eseli was actually the one who has the custody of all party documents. This is the same problem the deputy president is having. And I'm going to dissect the changes which are coming up in Jubilee Party probably today. The Secretary General of Jubilee Party is Rafael Tuju. That man is in the pocket of President Rukinata. So there's nothing which the deputy president can do. But what shocked me, before I go into the details, why Wetangula has to go. Before I go into those details, the Amani National Congress party leader, Musalia Mudavadi, actually responded to what's happening in this party. And I was like, why should Wetangula, why should Mudavadi respond to matters affecting another political party? Now this is what he has posted officially, press release. My attention has been drawn to tragic mischief taking place in Ford Kenya. A caucus of sponsored schoolings within Ford Kenya has held kangaroo neck meeting at which they presumed to carry out palace coup d'etat in the party to remove Senator Moses Rutangula from position of Ford Kenya party leader. They have further purported to replace him with a puppet party leader. The puppet is supposed to lead in holding capacity ahead of 
perpetuous replacing him with someone else is continue i am aware that this mischief has been in the making for some time now it is calculated to invade and destabilize all independent minded political parties the mischief has been orchestrated at a number of meetings led by the leader of nasa member party basically he's talking of raila odinga whose objective is to destroy and dominate everyone politically in this they are aided by the secretary general of kotu <laughs> the ugly ploy reminds us of the watergate scandal of june 1972 when the leader of a political party in the united states invaded another party in a manner we are now witnessing in kenya <laughs> You see, it's a, it's a serious matter. The moment you see Musalem Davadi now getting into that matter, Musalem Davadi has his party. His party is ANC. In my view, I don't understand why he was getting into this particular matter. In Ford, Kenya, it's a known fact that Eseli and Mudavadi and uh, Waitangula have been having issues. It's known that Wangamati has issues for a long time with Senator Waitangula. So Musalim Mudavadi cannot not, not come and drag the name of Raila Odinga. But it's understandable why he's dragging the name of Raila Odinga. Last week, a lot of things happened. Eseli was promoted to be the new minority, deputy minority whip. And then again, two weeks ago, Eseli, Wamunyini, and Omalwa were at Capitol Hill. And if you listen to that statement by Musalim Mudavadi, is alluding to the fact that Wamunyini is holding brief. Let me tell you what's going to happen in Fort Kenya. Fort Kenya is going to be headed by Eugene Wamalwa. That's the reality. So these changes have been engineered to pave way for Eugene Wamalwa to take over. So Eugene Wamalwa is going to be the new Fort Kenya leader. He initially had the new Fort Kenya which failed. But for, for now, all these schemes is going to be brought on board. And if you watched what happened at uh, Ndugu Francis Atuli's home, it was clear that Eugene Omalwa was appointed as a community spokesperson, as the lawyer spokesperson, alongside the ODM deputy party leader, weekly for Paranya. So you can now understand where this is going. But why are these coup happening now? I'm sure Wetangula can make noise, but once these guys are, the way these guys are executing this plot, Either we are going to have Fort Kenya split into two or a silly group are going to take over. That's the reality. Because even Wetangula, you can ask anybody when he was elected. He just engineered a coup against Muscari Kombo. That's how politics is in reality. But why is this happening? Number one, BBI politics. The BBI, we are, going, we are likely to have a referendum. Has Moses Wetangula been playing along? I don't think so. He's either been, he's been trying to be this side, he's been trying to be this side. Nobody knows where he stands. But these people are interested in Western Kenya. So in Western Kenya, for them to succeed, it means they must have those parties weakened. So Ford Kenya must only, can only survive if it's weak. That's when they can penetrate. A strong Ford Kenya cannot allow Raila and Uhuru to penetrate Western Kenya. Unless that Ford Kenya is playing part of them. It's part of their team. But Wetangula has refused to be part of the team. So he has to give way. These guys are serious. By bringing in Wamalwa, they are going to, to bring back the memory of the late Kijana Wamalwa. So people will not have any problem. Then look at it. In Bungoma County, now the Secretary General and now the, the party leader who is acting in Tarim. The governor is not with him. So he's with Weta. So that's number one. Number two is the 2022 realignment. Things are changing in this country so fast. Personally, I never thought that by this time we are going to witness this kind of high voltage politics. Things are moving so fast. But how are these realignments? The question is, we are going to, we are likely to have the constitution changed 
And if the constitution is changed, we are likely to have a president, pres president, deputy president. We are likely to have prime minister and maybe two deputy prime minister. And because the contest is going to be won in Western Kenya, Ruto can decide to team up with Musalia Madavadi and even make Musalia Madavadi the presidential candidate. If that happens, then the equation in Western Kenya is going to change. But if Mudavadi is going to run, then Ruto is going to run, then I can assure you, Mudavadi is going to be a walkover for Uhuru and Raila in Western Kenya. And that's why they are bringing this team. If you followed, if you followed the politics of Bungoma, the Odin party in Bungoma is very strong. Even the last election, they were very bitter with Raila Odinga because Raila Odinga advised them to not to fight, advised them to support most of the Ford Kenya candidates. Up to now, the ODM candidate, the gubernatorial candidate on ODM ticket is not happy. Kangati, Alfred Kangati, is not happy up to now because he believed the ODM party abandoned him. The officials of ODM party in that region are not happy. They felt ODM should have let them just finish up with Fort Kenya. I remember the rally which was held in that region. It was fight. Yani what wali pegana before the rally could take off. So now that realignment is being fixed. They want to bring a team which is going to align themselves. Because assuming Weta will decide to not to run or to support Musalem Madabadi, how is how are they going to deal with Mongoma? So they just did another political party for those who are not comfortable with the ODM to win those seats and then they'll be part of a coalition. Number three, I think, is about the parliamentary changes which are currently happening. Wetangula was removed as the minority leader at the National Assembly. He did nothing. He promised that it was going to be messy, it was going to be noisy and casualty. Nothing happened. So they went for Chris Wamamalwa, whom Wetangula has actually appointed now the new Secretary General of Fort Kenya. <laughs> So they removed Chris Wamalwa, kicked him out. They brought in a Selisi Mew. Those small positions in parliament are very important to politicians because they give them the platform. So today, if these guys were to be in a meeting, the person who is going to speak last, members of parliament, is going to be Selisi from Western Kenya. So Selisi moving forward is going to have more say he is going to is going to have platform to shine so i think because of those parliamentary leadership is what is causing battle because again politics is about interest so if raila and uru are taking the care of the interests of a silly and the group then they won't have a problem if you listen to moses vitangula address it was clear that these guys used choppers to ferry people where did they get the money from? And lastly, I think it's about Western Kenya politics. Is Western Kenya going to go the ANC way? Or is it going to go the Ford Kenya way? Or is it going to go a new formation? Or is it going to go the ODM way? Or is William Ruto going to succeed in invading Western Kenya? Those are the questions. And that is what is being fought here. Raila Odinga, Uru Kenyatta, through Musali, through a worry, uh, through a tool, Dugu Francis Atuli, and through now Wangamati and Seli are going to fight to deliver Western Kenya. In return, these guys are going to be rewarded. But what I can tell you for sure is that Wetangula should be very careful. If he's not careful, then automatically he's not going to be a principal in any other political party. He's just going to be an ordinary senator. And the worst part for Wetangula is that a Seli Simiyu is a likable pe person. People love him. And the Seli Simiyu has decided that Moses Wetangula is going to run for the Senate. He, him as a Seli, is also going to run for the Senate. So basically they're going to compete to see who is more popular and who is not popular. And that's the interesting bit of it. Because it's also said that Moses Vitangula is probably planning to run as a gubernatorial candidate in Bungoma in 2022. He wants to exit the national limelight. And probably that's the reason 
Why you want a mati? It's not comfortable with him. But the mere fact that a silly has said, we when a senator, right? I'm also coming for that senate seat. I don't know what you think. But in my view, it's going to be a very interesting week moving forward. Thank you guys. And if you're bumping on this video for the first time, I want you to take a second or two. Hit the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, you get notified. Thank you guys. And my next video is Jubilee Leadership. A lot of things are likely to change on Thursday, on Tuesday. Thank you guys. And please, may you have a good day.